troubled mind and we're here again another Sunday to just worship him in spirit and in truth let's open with that one his voice makes a difference his voice makes a difference A difference in the midst of the storm his voice makes a difference he's the God who says peace be still and the wind and the waves obey him in that matter in that word in that thought we want to be drawn closer to God let me see the hands of those who want to be drawn close to him because indeed he is the God who has protected us, who has been keeping us, and we want to be drawn close to him. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I 
Just worship the Lord because in his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore and we're here to fellowship and to just worship the Lord when we look back on last year and the year before 2020 which started out the pandemic we know that it's God that has brought us through. It is his here that we breathe. It was his word that kept us through. Those who are seated at this time, I ask of you to stand and to join us as we worship. Just reflect on God's goodness. Reflect on his love, reflect on his grace, because he is the God of all flesh. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your whole This is my daily bread. Could you worship the Lord? Say, This is my daily bread. Your very word. Your very word. Spoken to me.
Just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I. I'm lost 
But he said, those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And his love, his love, he will reach down that amazing hand of love and pull you up out of the miry clay and plant your feet on a rock to stay. When we sin and we keep sinning and keep asking forgiveness. He keeps forgiving and forgiving and forgiving and forgiving over and over. It's not for us to take it for granted but to just dive in his love. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned I'm alive and well spirit lives within me because you died and rose again Forgiven, I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, I'm accepted. You were condemned, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died. And rose again. Lift your voice and say, Amazing love, how can this be? You, my king, and you, my king, would die for me. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, I'm accepted. You were condemned, you were condemned. I'm alive, I'm alive and well. The Spirit lives within me because you died and rose again. Thank you. 
all I do, I should honor you. Could you just worship the Lord? Praise the Lord. Thank you. One thing I know, that when you honor God, he will honor you. In all I do, I honor you. Just put your hands above your head and give the Lord a praise. He deserves praises and he inhabits the praises of his people. At this time we do some lively choruses and I just want you to worship him with all of your being. You better get right with God. Come and do it now. Oh, under the cross of Jesus, I lay my burden down. Say, you better get right with God.
morning, church. My name is Jacqueline Lawrence, and I'll be your moderator for today. Let us just ask God's presence to be here with us this morning. So, Lord, we thank you for your presence here with us this morning. We thank you for sparing our lives so that we can be here this morning. We ask you, dear Lord, to open our hearts to the preaching and the service and everything that goes on here today. Let us not be hindered by whatever else is happening around us, Lord. Let us open our hearts and let us be thankful for everything that you have done for us. Grant us peace, wisdom, and understanding, and give us all the mercies, give us all mercy in your name. Thank you, Lord. So we ask God to come into our lives, and we are being reminded, that we have been reminded that we should stay right under the blood. We have been reminded that we should make it right with God. Today is, if we have not made it right already, today is a good day to make it right with God. So please sit, have a seat, enjoy yourselves, and we'll have Sister Pennico coming to do our devotion this morning. Let us continue to worship the Lord. Shall we praise the Lord? It's a great feeling to be in the house of the Lord this morning. To give him all that he deserves, our praises. Because when you look back, we never deserve what he has done for us. But he do it out of his love and kindness this morning. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. All the internet and Facebook, we greet you this morning. We're just going to turn our, e our Bible to Psalms 20 and we read together. Do you find it? Say amen. And we all stand, children and everyone, for the reading of God's word. Praise God. And it's read, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offering and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our balance. The Lord fulfill all thy petition. Now you now know that I that the Lord saved this anoint, is anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some must some trust in chariot, some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen. But we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. Praise be to God. We are going to sing this prayer chorus. Just the chorus of this. I need thee, O Lord. I need thee. And then we all pray. I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. Oh, bless me now.
righteous and eternal God and our Father. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that it is your strength that brings us here this morning. It is in you, God, we find our being, and it is you, God, we move this morning. We thank you, Lord God, this morning that it, it was you, God, who placed us to our bed this morning and wake us, God, in our right mind. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that we are in your awesome presence, God. We thank you, God, that we know that you are here this morning. And you are here to hear us, mighty God. Because we need you more than ever this morning. Our life is nothing without you this morning. We will be just nothing but failure without you this morning. And so, God, this morning, we thank you, Lord, that we have the privilege and the access to come before your throne this morning. Morning, to bow in prayer this morning, God, to call you this morning, Jesus, because the Psalm David has reminded us this morning that when we call, you will hear us this morning, and you will attend to us this morning. So, God, this morning, attend to us this morning. Oh, great God, this morning, God, some of us, God, are standing, but we are here, God, but Lord Jesus, not feeling well in our body. But this morning we come, Lord God Almighty, because we know that this is the right and the principle, God, to be in your house, God Almighty. To just give you what you deserve, God, is our praises this morning. Father, we pray, God, that you will invade this place this morning. Show up for us like never before this morning. And do for us which you can't do for ourselves this morning. I pray this morning, God, that you will move from Rustom to view this morning. I pray God this morning that you will stand with the choir this morning. Stand with the musician this morning. Even the choristers this morning. God, they need you this morning. They need you Lord in the congregation this morning. Maybe someone will be here this morning. Do not know where God Almighty the food will come from this morning. But because you are Jehovah Jireh this morning morning. Provide for someone this morning, Lord. Let them have something, God, to feed their family this morning, Jesus. Father, we pray this morning that you will have your way this morning. This morning, service is already into your hand, God. And we put it even more into your hand this morning. That thy will be done, God, not our will this morning. That everything that will be done this morning will be done to the glory and the honor of you this morning, Jesus. I pray that God, each and every one that's standing in your presence this morning, they come to offer our praise this morning because there's nothing, God Almighty, you have not done for us, mighty God. When we call you answer, when we, oh God, is weak, you give us strength. God, when we need comfort, you comfort us this morning. God Almighty, when we need help, Lord God, all we have to do is call on the name of Jesus and he will bring help this morning. So there's nothing for us, God, to end up from giving your praise glory this morning. Jesus. Father, we praise your name this morning. We praise you, God, this morning. God, one more time, Jesus, because we have no other but you this morning. Bless us again, God, we pray in Jesus' precious holy name. We worship you, God, this morning, God. We worship your name this morning, Jesus. We honor you this morning, God. We glorify your name this morning. You are awesome in our midst this morning. You are awesome in our presence, in our life, God Almighty, this morning you are awesome, God. You are great and you are mighty this morning. And Lord, we show our love to you this morning, Jesus. We tell you we love you, Lord, and we thank you for your mercy and your kindness, God, towards us this morning. We bless you, Lord, this morning. Amen. Praise God. We turn our email to M133. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Nor pain nor death can enter there. I feel like traveling on. Carister. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. No pain nor death can enter there. I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. I feel like 
traveling on My heavenly hope Right there in bed I feel like traveling on Clinton comes the sun outshine. I feel like traveling on. The heavenly mansion shall be mine. I feel like traveling on. fun, aren't you? That is how you are to come to church and enjoy worshiping. Do we have anybody who is visiting with us for the first time? If so, would you stand please? So we have no visitors among us. Let me all ask you to just enjoy yourself. It is great to have you here today. We are appreciative of persons who make the effort to come out to service each morning. And so we ask God to bless us all as we are here worshiping with him. It is a pleasure to have you here today. And we hope you will enjoy yourself. Thank you for coming. We'll now have the Bible time. Please turn your Bibles to Luke 2. Verse 12, please stand for the reading of the Bible time. And it reads, and this shall be a sign unto you. 
ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Once again, and this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Next week's Bible time will come to us from Acts 1, verse 11. We'll now have the announcements by Brother Orphan McFarlane. Good morning to all God's people. Yeah, you're looking so blessed down there. It's a beautiful day for the Lord to come again. And as we are reminded in this morning's devotion that we must be traveling on. Not feel like traveling on, but we should be traveling on. Amen? All right. So the announcement goes as follows. And let me hope that after I've read them, that they will stick in your mind. Please be reminded that after this morning's service, the second service, all ladies, and that's all ladies, will meet with our pastor for a very special and intriguing session. And I know that session is going to bring more fruit than what we are seeing today. Amen? Good. And tomorrow evening, we have no service. On Tuesday, however, Life Builders, calling all men. This is a national Beast and Street call. Calling all men. You are going to meet me here today. No, but Tuesday, not today. Ladies meet today. But on Tuesday, you meet me here at 6 o'clock for our choir rehearsal. And that's calling all men. Brother Mahoney, Brother Brown, I'm calling some of you by name, the Brembridges. Make sure you are here by 6 o'clock on Tuesday for choir practice. You see these beautiful ladies up here? Don't let them um, outdo them when they come to food on Sunday. All right? All right? Um, Brother Brian, you too. I'm calling you to a national call. <laughs> Amen. Good. All right. And on 7 o'clock on Tuesday as well, the ladies will meet for ladies' ministry service. And as usual, the ladies are always out in their numbers. And we crave that more ladies will come and support their meeting. On Wednesday at 10 o'clock, it's fasting service. And at 6.30... It's testimony service and Bible study. And I want you to come out for Bible studies because we, I think we have a very special study going to be starting on Wednesday. Right. We have a special um, study starting on Wednesday, so I'm going to ask everybody. I don't want to see just an handful of people. I want all of us who are here and even more to come out on Wednesday and support the Bible study because when we study the word of God, then we know to combat the enemies when the enemies come upon us. On Friday, it will be the funeral service for Brother George's mother and all those who are interested, you are already supposed to be give, given a name to Brother Sister Marjorie Malcolm. I hope that you have done so. I guess the register closed today. So if you are not on, is that so? Close long time. Oh, praise Jesus. Embassy close. All right. So if you, if you have not given your name already, I'm sorry for you. You may have to just walk to St. Elizabeth. And $700 for each member or each person who are coming, you will have to pay a tiny fee of seven devalued Jamaican dollars. 700 devalued Jamaican dollars. However, Instead of meeting on Friday, the youth choir, we will meet on Thursday due to the fact that I will be going to the funeral service and I'm not sure if I will be back in time. But on Thursday, the youth choir will meet for practice instead of Friday. That, that will start at 6 o'clock. That will start at what time? All right. So we start at 6 on Thursday for and, and I'm for choir practice. And I'm going to ask you to be on time so we can finish in on time to give the praise team their rehearsal slot. Just a bit of announcement. Um, mothers and fathers, if you have your babies dedicated today or any other Sunday, as a matter of fact, and you have not been registered on the Wednesday evening, you won't get your certificate, uh, your baby certificate on the Sunday that, you, that the babies have been christened. All right, so if you have not been um, registered on the Wednesday evening following the, the, the Sunday morning service for your dedic baby's dedication, you will not get your baby's certificate. 
And on the note of education, on Sunday, March 20th, on Sunday, March 20th, all persons in need, in a, interested in applying for the Eli Tenon Scholarship are asked to meet immediately after church upstairs in the computer room. And also, if this person is attending the second service, you will also ask, you are also asked to attend upstairs in the computer room. And on the note of anniversary, Sister Aishika Riley and Brother Riley celebrated their anniversary on March 10th. Can you stand, darling? Yes. Yes, they celebrated their wedding anniversary on March 10th. That was last week. Last week, one day. Yeah. <laughs> last week, one day. And well done, um, girl. And you tell Mr. Riley I want to see him in church. Um, well, not, not next week Sunday. Are you listening? Not Sunday coming, but men Sunday. Tell him I want to see him at church, all right? Those were the announcements. Let me hope that you bear them in mind. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Orville. We'll now have the dedication of babies. There are no babies to be dedicated. Please turn your hymnal to hymn number 61 while we do the ladies' co ministries co collection. May we have two volunteers to collect the ladies' ministry offering. Thank you, volunteers. Please stand. Abide with me. Fast falls the evening tide. The darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. When all the helpers fail and comforts flee, Help of all helpers who abide with me. Swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day. Earth joys grows dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me. I need thy presence, ever passing o'er. What but thy grace can foil the tempest poor? Who like thyself, my guide and stay can be through cloud and sunshine who abide with me. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Hell's morning breaks and earth's mid shadows flee. In life, in death, O oh Lord, abide with me. Abide with me. Fast for the evening tide, the darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. And all their helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless who abide with me. Thank you all. We'll now have the cathedral choir doing their ministry, after which we'll have our pastor to take over. Thank you.
what an assurance to look forward to that that which we seem to be enjoying this side is not even a glimpse of what it's going to be like when we get over yonder. It's, a, it, it, it's not going to be what it's going to be like when we get over yonder. Because when we get over there, we'll be singing and dancing and shouting. It will be an unending atmosphere that we will be a part of. And unlike being this side when we become tired and weary, we won't get tired over there. We won't get weary over there. We won't get hungry over there either. Hallelujah. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see just to look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace then he'll take me by the hand and lead me to the promised land what a day glorious day that will be Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You can miss heaven if you want to. But I'm going there. I say, I, I say you can miss it if you want to. But I'm going there. And I look forward to seeing all of you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. I feel like I want to sing, but I won't sing. <laughs> oh, won't it be a time when we get over here? Before you take your seat, just tap your neighbor on the shoulder. Just tap them on the shoulder. And when you tap them, you're going to sing and shout. When we get... We're gonna sing and shout. When we get over ya, we're gonna sing and shout. That's about them. We're gonna sing and we're gonna shout. When we get over ya.
The Lord bless you. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Oh, God. I came by to have church. And if you don't want to have church and you're in the wrong place, praise the name of the Lord. So, I just want to endorse the welcome that has already been given and to let you know how tremendously satisfied I am to see all of you who have made the journey from near and from far, made the sacrifice to be part of this fellowship this morning. So delighted to see you, whether you're on screen or you're in the sanctuary. It is my joy and my delight to see you. Let me make some observations before. The last Wednesday and Thursday of this month, we'll be having, uh, you know, those special services. And, and, and that's, that's the way it's going to be for the next until we finish this church year. So every last Wednesday and every last Thursday, you come on out. Let's have church. And I look forward to seeing you come. Let us shout and dance and sing and praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. A few days ago, I told you that I asked a brother who is not a member of the sanctuary, but he has um, been attending with other family members. And I asked him to do some repairs to this podium. And he did so um, in quick timing. I, I, I would have loved if I could have half a dozen brethren who would be so, um, you know, urgent in their response to what we have to do here. But when I asked him, he just went ahead and got it done. And then on Sunday... You know, because ever since we had pastor's appreciation, I got a, an opportunity to see that little uh, table that you put here for me. Got a real chance to see how it looked. And then I realized that it didn't look like me. It didn't look like me. It was... It just flat. It just flat. Take off, take off me something there. It, it is mine, you hear? It is mine. I feel me. This yes, I make you know. So I make me I look like you want take it. Well, put on that now and take it up. All right. Let everybody see. And, and, and it's not only one. You know, he has done it twice. So the one over here, so you feel use it. Now put on part for me one again, all right? All right, you, you work over this side. Put this up Yeah. Give me over that one. All right. So, so we've asked him to help us, and um, he did so. Um, Brother Jeffrey, put your hands together for him. Stand up, sir. That's Brother Jeffrey. He did it for us. And so I want to thank you, sir, for your kindness and your support for the ministry here and the, and the church at, here at Beeston Street. Um, you've done tremendously well. In fact, let me just say to all of you who, who have furniture to build, you know, call him up. If you have a cupboard to put in your house, call him up and, and, and support the brother and build up in business. Um, you know, sorry, sir, you don't build suit. If you build suit, I would have, um, you would have gotten me, uh, you know, a suit right away. Uh, and he's not the only one who, who does, um, work here in this church. Um, of course, all of you know by now that brother, brother Joseph, um, uh, and I, I was, I wanted to ask him to do a grill someone's lip but I won't ask him here praise the name of the Lord <laughs> but, but we'll talk after church <laughs> praise the Lord praise the Lord All right. Um, baptism you know right after church on Sunday someone came and asked me pastor when is the next baptism so I told them 
it should be towards the end of the month. So the, the last Saturday of this month, whatever day that is, Brother Foot and team, you make your way across to that river over there. Um, let's... I didn't say T. I said Brother Foot and team. How are wrong with you now? Hope in your haze. Hey, tea the pioneer man. <laughs> tea you want drink. Uh -huh. All right, so uh, please sort it out for us. We'll go across to that to that river, and we'll have baptism. Now we also uh, we also had last week uh, some uh, disappointment, um, brother brother Nemard and. And Sister Duncan, they suffered fire um, down in the uh, the market, and, and and as a church, we we have a duty to to rally with them. And so I'll be engaging them um, right after church. But you know, I what I what I've loved um, is that since. Since the fire, um, I've, I've gotten pictures of new beginnings um, that, that, that they, they didn't stay down. They have risen up. Yeah. And I'm grateful to God, you know, um, you know for, for what has transpired so far. You know, we are a resilient set of people. And my only hope is that as a church and as a people uh, right across this landscape, whether we are in West Kingston or anywhere else in this country, uh, that we do what we can, you know, to put those who want to create mayhem and disorder in this country, we put them where they belong. Uh, you know, you know, it, you know the, the time has come for us to be hugging up um, criminals and criminality uh, whether they belong to your family yes or no you know you know I'll, I'll, I'll share this with you and you can say how hard I am uh, if you if you so yes um, you know a few years ago a cousin of mine went to a dance got into a fight with someone, broke the person's hand. He was arrested. And then after he was arrested, went to court. They charged him some money. And my family called me up, asked me to help to pay the fine. I said, listen to me. Me and mama, because he grew up in my mother's home, or in our home, really, from he was three months. I said, we didn't send him to dance. So whoever sent him to dance, let them pay the money. You know, and I didn't give him one cent. Well, then find their way out. But not my money is going to go into anything that I don't believe in. You know, and it's the same thing. Nobody will get me to support anything that I don't believe in. And as a people, as a people, you know, we must not embrace any form of illegality around us. As God's people, we must stand up against what is wrong and do what is right. My only hope is that for the time that I'm with you, that some of what is on me will rub off on you and you'll begin to take a stand against wrong. And embrace what is right. We're going to be praying for those individuals. We're going to be praying for them in a, in a moment. And we'll be doing what we can in order to get them, you know, up and about again. 
We have to do that. Because uh, these are faithful people in our congregation. Uh, and, and, and so, um, while we pray for them, last night when I was doing my own meditation as it relates to what transpired, I asked God, how should I do it and when should I do it and the mode for it to be done. So in a moment we'll get there, but before we get there, um, our sister, sister Bainbridge, that's Roya, um, she has opened her business, uh, she has opened her little shop and has stocked it out and I want to thank God our people are moving on up. So we'll say a prayer for Sister Saroya and that the business will, will thrive. And those of you who are in the Seaview Gardens area, um, you can support it. And, and even if you're not in the Seaview Gardens area, if you want to, Tina Mackerel, call her, tell her if you can come to church. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, right. So we want to thank God for her. Um, you know, and uh, support the venture. Uh, you know, the other announcements have been given. We, we endorse him and we embrace them. Um, bring that thing to me, son. Uh, where's Tristan? Come, son. Come, mama. Come, with, come to Tristan. Come. Last month, one of our preachers that came here saw Brother Tristan on the drums. And when he went to the office, he said, Rev, I need to do something for that youngster. The Lord just impressed upon me that I should do something for that youngster. That's the same preacher who gave Brother Orville his... Lexus to drive. So when I called mommy, mommy told me that he needed a tablet. Well, he made the purchase overseas. The tablet came. He brought it to me on Friday. And so I told them that they need to be in church because I need to hand over the... the well, I wanted him to come here and do it himself. But he said, Rev, I don't want to delay. He's studying. Let me get the tablet to him right away. So, son, on behalf of Minister Michael Mirage, I want to present to you your tablet. In fact, it came in, you know, um, let, let, you know, you can open the box. Let, let them put it on the camera. Yeah. You know, in fact... This is what it says, laptop, tablet with detachable keyboard. Yeah, man, look at it. Yeah. The Lord bless you. Go and go boast you up yourself. You know, the only thing that we need to do just to be faithful to our God. Just be faithful to our God. And we'll never know when the Lord is going to show up on our behalf. I, I know I have me some people here who want God to show up for them. Just throw up your hand in the air and say, Lord, just show up for me too. Just show up for me, Lord, show up. Hallelujah. Will you stand with me now? When I've come to the river At the ending of day When the life winds of sorrow have blown there'll be somebody waiting to show me the way I won't have to cross Jordan 
Alô Often times I'm forsaken And weary And sad When it seems like My friends have all gone There is one though That cheers me And makes my heart glad I won't have to cross Jordan alone Billows of sorrow and trouble may sweep. Christ, my Savior, oh hallelujah, will care for his own till the end of the journey. My soul, he will keep I won't have to cross Jordan alone oh I won't have to cross Jordan alone oh Jesus died all my sins When the dark I see He'll be waiting For me I won't have To cross Jordan Alone Take it down, take it down I want everybody now to pick your Bibles up since we can't hold hands, I want you to stretch your Bible toward the person that is closest to you. Let them hold on to it. Because that's your point of contact as we seek the face of our God. I have only one mandate. I say I have only one mandate. Just to do what God wants me to do in this congregation and in this community. I hold no briefs for anyone. But anytime you touch God's people, you touch me. And anytime you touch God's people, you touch God. So those who are involved in these kinds of activities, they must pay. And we are going to ask God to do it. Don't run crying to me thereafter when God starts to do his work. Hallelujah. Oh, when the darkness Oh, he'll be waiting Oh, I won't have to cross Jordan alone The person whose Bible you're holding, just, just, just say to them, neighbor, you won't cross this Jordan alone. Because the God that I serve, he's with you. He's with you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you for this morning. It is a day that you have made. And we will rejoice, oh God, and be glad in it. 
our soul shall boast in you this morning. The humble shall hear this morning and be glad. And so we magnify your name, O God, because your name is above every name. That at your name, O God, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are God and you are Lord above all. So we quiet our hearts before you inside this sanctuary this morning, O God, because you've given us another opportunity to come in your presence. Your presence means much to us, our oh God, because in your presence, O God, there is fullness of joy. Moses told you, God, when you sent him, ah, oh God, down to Pharaoh, Ah, uh, God, he told you, I, I, I won't go unless your presence goes with me. And so, God, we won't do anything unless your presence is with us. Ah, uh, God. And so we say, like the psalmist, the God of Jacob is with us. And that same God, he is our refuge. And so in the time of storm, you promise to hide us in the secrets of your pavilion. Because that's where you promise, oh God, to hide your children. God, we bring to you this morning, our God, we bring to you the Nemhard family and the Duncan family. Lord God, their businesses have been ravaged by fire. Oh God, they are your children. They have been faithful to you. They are your servants. They have committed themselves, oh God, to doing the things that you've called them to do. They pleased you, God, but the enemy has touched them. Oh God, through his emissaries, oh God, in these communities. This morning, Daddy, this morning, Daddy, you told us if we call on you, you will come to our refuge. Lord God, you told Jeremiah just to call your name. So as a people in Beeston Street, we are calling your name. Oh God, we are calling your name. Jesus, we love calling your name because you rescued your children when we call your name. Lord God, you help your children when we call your name. Lord God, you heal us when we call your name. You deliver us when we call your name. So in the name of Jesus, Lord God, Lord God, those who are involved in these kinds of activities, this morning, Daddy, this morning, Daddy, this morning, Daddy, bring them to the fore so we can identify them. Mm -hmm. Lord God, Lord God, why do the heathen rage? Why do the heathen rage? This morning, Daddy, we put the heathen under subjection by the authority of the Holy Ghost. We command those hands that lit the fire. We command them this morning under the authority of the Holy Ghost. We command them paralyzed in the name of Jesus. Ooh. 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 Jesus. Ah, oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more will your children suffer these kinds of a disappointment. So God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who are involved in these kinds of affairs, Lord God, expose them. We say expose them. And if families are suckering them, expose the families too. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
and if friends are providing cover expose the friends too in the name of Jesus and daddy it doesn't matter where they belong it doesn't matter where they belong this morning daddy we are saying do it for us because as a church we join in agreement we join in agreement and because we're joining in agreement your word says one shall chase a thousand and two shall put ten thousand to flight so by the authority of the Holy Ghost we declare now we declare now we declare now that there will be peace and safety for all the vendors for every vendor in this church every vendor oh god in the coronation market here was street market rare rare market we declare them covered this morning we declare their goods covered this morning in the name of jesus christ and we declare god that they shall rise again they shall rise again in the name of jesus christ and so lord i ask you also manifest yourself in that business that sister soroya has started grant her increase grant her increase lord i say grant her increase in the name of jesus the christ and father there are people in this congregation that needs healing this morning they are joining hands through your word so whatever the needs are meet that need right now in the name of jesus christ domestic need financial need mental psychological spiritual oh god educational oh god whatever degree of healing your children desire today meet it on their behalf in the name of jesus the christ but lord someone's knees needs healing right now especially oh god the right knee bring healing oh god bring it for your children and we're going to praise you because you're christ eternal for christ's sake we pray amen the person whose bible you're holding i want you now while you're holding that bible shout the name of jesus shout the name of jesus once again shout the name of jesus again Shout the name of Jesus a final time. Now lift up your hand and shout the name of Jesus. I didn't tell you to sit yet. You come here to tire with me, so tire with me, man. Tire with me. know you are, you have your own issues like I do but tire with me we come here to praise God we come here to praise our God so while you're standing just raise your hand and give God some praise praise him for what he has done praise him for what he is doing hallelujah to the Christ praise the name of our God We bless the name of the Lord. We bless the name of our God. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Point to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you won't have to cross your Jordan alone. Find three people and tell them now, you won't have to cross Jordan. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our God. Hallelujah. We bless the name of our God. Sister Gillies was in Canada for a few months. She's now back with us. Put your hands together for her. Uh, 
And here's someone who spent two years in, in Japan, spent some time in France. A linguist, if you want to call her that. She's going to share the word with us this morning. Put your hands together and make welcome, Sister Kamala Copeland. the highest praise one more time hallelujah hallelujah mighty God we bless your name the God of Daniel Meshach and Abednego Lord God we thank you almighty God that you have brought us once more in your presence in your sanctuary almighty God because it's a privilege to be here to be able to lift our hands freely and worship mighty God Hallelujah, so many places in the world, they have to hide their praises. But we thank you, almighty God, that we are born in a country where we are able to lift our hands freely. Hallelujah, mighty God, we thank you for your grace, these small mercies of being able to lift our hands. May we not take it lightly, but while we have the chance, may we just lift our hands and worship. Because there will come a time when we won't have these rights. But may we, even when these rights have been taken away from us, may we be still brave yet to call upon your name because it is your name that reigns, your name that brings down the enemy, your name that stops the wars, your name that brings healing, your name that raises us up, mighty God, we thank you. In you we put our trust, mighty God. When we are weak, mighty God, you're, you are made strong. Your strength, Lord God, replaces our weakness. Hallelujah, mighty God. We bless your name. We thank you, O oh God. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me to Nahum chapter 1. That's Nahum chapter 1. And we'll begin at verse 2 to 3, and then verses 16 to 13. 6 to 13. That's Nahum chapter 1, verses 2 to 3, and then we'll go from 6 to 13. The Lord is a jealous and avenging God. The Lord takes vengeance and is filled with wrath. The Lord takes vengeance on his foes and vents his wrath against his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger, but great in his power. The Lord will not leave the guilty unpunished. His, ways, his way is like the whirlwind, whirlwind and the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Verse 6. Who can withstand his indignation? Who can endure his fierce anger? His wrath is poured out like fire. The rocks are shattered before him. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. But with an overwhelming flood, he will make an end of Nineveh. He will pursue his foes in the realm of darkness. Whatever they plot against the Lord, he will bring to an end. Trouble will not come a second time. They will be entangled among thorns and drunk from their wine. They will be consumed like dry stubble. From you, Nineveh, has one come from who plots an evil against the Lord and devises wicked plans. This is what the Lord says. Although they have allies and are numerous, they will be destroyed and pass away. Although I have afflicted you, Judah, I will afflict you no more. Now I will break their yoke from your neck and tear your shackles away. Where is your trust? Percy, will you join with me? Um, could you do again, this is the air I breathe? 
that says the air I breathe. It says the air I breathe. Your holy presence will be reach out with your praise. is something that is sometimes unseen and it's rather experienced. When we see the presence of God, we are indirectly seeing God. And the result of what coming into contact with the presence of God feels like and looks like. Verse 3 compares God to be like the wind. His way is like the whirlwind and the storm. He is an unseen force that can be sweet and gentle, but he can also be bold and powerful. And under certain circumstances, he can even be destructive. It all depends on your experience. When we go to a hotel resort and we sit by the beach, on one of, under one of the cabanas and we have a pina colada in our hands and we lay back with the breeze blowing in our hair we are at ease and we don't want it to end we have serenity and a beautiful view that's like the warm and inviting presence of God for some after this after leaving the <clears throat> excuse me after leaving the hotel resort which in this case is like the worship sanctuary. They go home to a beachfront property. And so they still have access to this warm and inviting presence, even though they no longer have someone fanning the flame of their worship. For others, after they leave the sanctuary, their worship experience is like a little fan in the house that gives some breeze, but it is nothing compared to that beach at the breeze, that breeze at the beach, <laughs> the sanctuary worship. Wind can also be mysterious, like a whirlwind stirring up the leaves, the presence of God working in a, in a miraculous way. 
Have you, have you ever witnessed sometimes when persons are operating under the Spirit and they are moving and sometimes they're running and their eyes are closed and you're wondering how it is that they, they're, they're not bumping into someone, they're not falling over, but the Spirit leads and it guides them. The mysteries of the Holy Spirit. There is the destructive element of wind that can be for the good of some, but for the ill of others. An example of this is Hurricane Gilbert. And some of you are too young to know about Hurricane Gilbert. But it was one of the most legendary hurricanes back then. And it became a reference point in history for many. The strength of, the, of a hurricane is defined by its wind power. The stronger the wind, the bigger the category. Now for most persons, Hurricane Gilbert was a terrible thing to be reckoned with. This unfor unseen force ravaged many islands, sweeping up cars and land and animals, people, rich and poor. It was no respect of person. As long as you were in its path, you got touched. At the end of it, we could say that there may have been weeping, wailing, and maybe even gnashing of teeth. One man, however, decided to put a comical spin. Jamaicans say, take bad things and make laugh. So he said, what a come in my room. I sweep out some with a broom. The little dog laughed to see such fun and the dish ran away with a spoon. He goes on further to tell us the good things that he got from Gilbert. On a semi dish, on a semi dish, on a semi satellite dish. So although there was flooding and roofs were gone, he was able to get some new things that he didn't have before. And where did they come from? The powerful unseen force of the wind perhaps blew them to him. So too may God sometimes have to work in a forceful manner to bring about his plans and his judgment in our lives and the, against our enemies. He warned the people of Nineveh many years before by sending Jonah to them. And yes, they repented, but somewhere along the line, they fell back into their old ways, and so God exacted judgment on them. And in the midst of that judgment, bad for the Ninevites, but glorious and wonderful for the people of Judah, who long awaited the fulfillment of the prophecies where they would be freed from oppression of their enemies. You see, Jonah was upset at the fact that God spared the Ninevites because they were a wicked and cruel people. But at the time, they were truly repentant. And so God spared their... their God, and so God... Deliver, when Jonah delivered the prophecy of their doom... Or loving God spared them. Because that's just he, who he is. He is a loving and a forgiving God. Amen. And while studying this scripture, I thought to myself, well then God, you're all knowing. You knew that about 150 years later, they would go back to their old ways. So why bother? And we could say the same thing about no. But God... You knew that uh, how things would be. That even 2,000 odd years later, after Jesus died as our sacrifice, that people would still be sinning and the world would, uh, be, would even seem worse and they'd find new ways to carry out all the sins. What is the point of sending Jesus to die for such a wretched people? But that's just God. He leave the 99 sheep just to go after the one lost sheep. He looked and saw that Kamala would be born and that she would be born in sin. But 
he said, I, the Lord, have such great plans for her. So I can't sit by and allow her to be consumed by sin. I have to give her a chance to experience me. He looked and he saw that although Cleo Ellis was a greedy little boy and cannot satisfy with half cup of tea. <sighs> and then eventually he would grow to be a man with a big belly. But he would grow to be, a, even though he has a big belly, he has an even bigger heart. A heart that cares for people. A heart that looks out for our interests. A heart that serves. A heart that cries when you cry. A heart that laughs when you laugh. And so for that reason, he said to Jesus, Go, my beloved son. Kamala will need you. Go, my beloved son, because Cleo will need you. Go, because beasts and streets will need you. But let us not be like the Ninevites who became complacent. Because God lifted his hands and spared them from destruction. But they became comfortable with the easy breezy. Just the, way, the same way that we have a free will, we may think we are free to sin. But there is always a consequence and a judgment day when the hand of the Lord will be felt with full force. And I pray that at the, at the end, that, I pray that we will be on the good end of that judgment, rejoicing and thanking God for his grace, rather than lamenting and weeping and wailing, rather than trusting in God, and looking to him and his words for guidance and protection, they started to trust in their wealth, in chariots and in horses. But when the force of God came knocking at their gates, all their wealth and the chariots and iron bars could not protect them. You see, it is much easier for us to put our trust in something that we can see before us. It's tangible. We can feel it and hold it in our hands and say, yes, this is real. This is good or this is not so good. Humanly, we say seeing is believing. But spiritually, our Bible says, blessed are those who have not seen but believe. Though we may not have walked with Jesus 2,000 odd years ago, we have his word to guide us. And blessed are those who have not walked with Jesus personally, physically when he was on the earth. But we still have this Holy Spirit that is walking with us daily. You see, it is easier to put your trust in a chair. Because, for example, pastor's chair. When he came, you know, it looks quite sturdy. Looks like it has good construction. We've seen different persons using it. And uh, what would you say about this chair, sir? Strong. Strong, right? Many persons before have come and used it. And it's, uh, it's, it's held up to its construction, right? Different weights and sizes, heights, and everything has, have sat in this chair, right? And it even looks a throne-like. It looks like a throne, right? So we can trust that this chair will hold us up, right? And, uh, you know, when Pastor got here, he looked at the chairs that we were sitting in, and then he decided that... Mm -mm. I will not sit in this comfortable chair while you sit in these chairs that are uncomfortable. And so he said, until you, my people, are comfortable, this is not something that I will use. And so then he went and he got us nice cushioned chairs. How do you feel in the chair, sister? It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Amen. Can we testify to that? It's wonderful. And from its construction, we can also say that 
it's uh, something that will hold us up, right? Everyone was so excited to be the first to sit in them because it's visually and aesthetically pleasing. It's cushioned and it looks like it can hold up to even 600 pounds or more without being shaken. <laughs> it's wide enough to hold that pressure. We've seen it, we've tried it, tested it and proven it. And it hasn't failed in the almost six years that uh, it has been here. And they still seat us comfortably. So then we can say that our pastor knows how to buy quality goods and that he cares for his people. Amen. But then we got, before we got these beautiful and sturdy chairs, there were the wooden benches. And uh, pastor said that they were unco so uncomfortable that uh, some of us would stand for most of the service and worship. But no, the blessing of new chairs has partly become a hindrance to our worship. We're counting on the chairs to hold us up rather than for the Spirit of, the, of God to lift us up. Where is your trust? In verse 12, this is what the Lord says. Although they have allies and are numerous, they will pass away. They will be, be destroyed and pass away. Although I have afflicted you, Judah, I will afflict you no more. Now I will break the yoke, their yoke from your neck and tear away the shackles. Let us not put our trust in the institutions and the peoples of this world, but in the one who is able to bring both peace and destruction with one blow of his breath. On the day of judgment, May we be found on the right side of history. Yes. Where is your trust? Yes. Going back to the analogy of uh, chairs. You see, the mark of a good leader is that if I am leading you and you are representing me, then you should be looking just as good as I am. Yes. Right? And so for that, pastor wasn't comfortable within himself to just be up here experiencing the lovely cushion the seat whilst his people would come and mm, oh my sometimes you leave your back hurts and you 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 you're come and physically you're coming with some you're leaving with something that you didn't come with originally you were uncomfortable but a good shepherd looks out for his people But he didn't just, uh, no. so, but with these comfortable chairs came a bit of relaxing and uh, sometimes relaxing can lead to a posture of ease and a slumber. I beg of you, do not be so comfortable that we are not watchful, that we are not looking. A few weeks ago, I came in in between services and by that time just about all the seats were taken and uh, my spot and around there in the back was uh, where I usually sit it was taken you see in my spot around there I'm comfortable I'm at ease because I know who to expect, what's, what's, uh, how they worship and the type of spirit that they bring so you know I'm comfortable I know what to expect. On that Sunday, Brother Floyd was kind enough to give me his seat just right over there. And, you know, he's, let, let's give Brother Floyd a hand because he's always just jumping around and looking to see how he can assist and how he can contribute. So we, we thank you for that, Brother Floyd. But you see, even though the chair is the same, it's the same cushioned chair. It's the same comfortable chair. I was not comfortable. You see, I was in a new location. My back was to the door. And I, I know the people because, yes, I do see you on a Sunday. But it's a different feeling. And so I was on high alert because I felt my back was just so very exposed. 
And then all these thoughts started coming to my mind. Suppose some shooting start. You're right at the door. And then sometimes Floyd would be, you know, standing um, overhead and, uh, and um, keeping watch at the door. But, and for a time I felt okay. But really, if something was to go down... You think Brother Floyd is going to jump and say, oh, come on and let me protect you. Just like the, the, the queen, the, just the, the way the, um, the queens, her bodyguards, they have been trained to sur surrender their life. So if there's a shooting that starts, they have to huddle around the queen. If they get shot, thank you for your service. But I believe that Brother Floyd's survival instincts instincts would have kicked in and he would protect his back first and not mine. <laughs> I prayed so hard that Sunday morning and by second service I made sure to secure my regular seats. But sometimes God has to shift us up and take us out of our comfort zones so that we'll be alert and in constant prayer. We'll have a different perspective We'll call on him for guidance and protection and coverage rather than trusting in our own strength and the strength of familiarity of things and people around us. Where is your trust? It says in verse 7, it says, The Lord is good a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. What are the things that we are putting our trust in today? The job? No job is really secure. At any time, they can come and they can say, even though you've been working for them for 30 years, they will come and they will say, thank you so much for your service. Maybe they'll give you a certificate, but after that, you're on your own. What's next? We can put our trust in people, but people fail us. It's a very real thing. Where are we putting our trust? Let us lay in the bosom of God who has never failed us. Let us uh, lean into him and trust in his timing because sometimes we, we are here and it seems as if uh, God is doing nothing. And so some, some, sometimes, um, just like with Abraham and Sarah, where even though God gave them the promise, they said, boy, it's been a while. Uh, Sarah is not pregnant yet. Mm, let's help out God a bit. Maybe, maybe Sarah wasn't the one to carry the baby. After all, she's so up in age. And so we go off and we alter the promise. We create a new promise. But those have lasting effects. They have consequences. Where is your trust? There's um, a song that, um, that I want to do called Some Trust in Chariots. Forgive me, I don't know all the words. Just a moment. It says, uh, just as in um, Psalm 20, it says, uh, I'll trust in him. If you know it, will you join in with me? Aria, he is 
is my refuge In Him will I trust In Him will I trust Some trust in chariots Some trust in horses But I will remember The name of the Lord He is my reality Stand with me In Him will I trust. Hallelujah, mighty God. We will put our trust in You. We will not look to chariots and the horses and the things of this world, O oh Lord. Yes, there are things that we need, O oh mighty God. But Lord God, above everything else, we need You. Hallelujah, because you were here before we existed. You are here from the beginning of time and you will be here even after we have left this world. Hallelujah, Lord God. But let us put our trust in you so that even after we pass away, we will rejoin you, Lord God, in heaven where we, we will worship your name, mighty God, and be with you. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Where is your trust? Time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in Him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring. Friends forsaken, still more closely to him cling, and I say, Hold to God's unchanging hand. I say, Hold to God's unchanging hand. Not this world's vain riches that so rapidly decay. Oh, seek to gain the heavenly treasures. Oh, that will never pass away. Say hold. 
when your journey is completed if to God you have been true oh fair and bright the whole in glory oh your and your soul with you and I say hold to God and gently her I say hold to God and gently her your trust I hope that your trust is not in our political leaders they fail us so easily I hope your trust also is not in your pastor he has the propensity and the proclivity to fail you also I hope your trust is not in your job because you'll have to retire and leave it one day I hope your trust neither is in your children because they get old move out of the house and then they put you in the infirmary but I guarantee you one thing that when you put your trust in the Lord everything is gonna be all right I say everything is gonna be all right because some trust in chariots and some in horses but we will remember the name of the Lord our God because the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and they are saved I have no other God but you I have no other God Sing it at the time. If your trust is in the systems of this world, one thing is certain, they will fail you. But the God that we serve, he will never fail you. So you're here today, you're not a Christian, you want us to pray for you before you will go. Then you cannot raise your hand and say, preach or pray with me. Because I need the Lord. I see one hand over there. Is there another? I see one hand down there too. Yes. Hallelujah. So since he never failed you, can, can, can you do a little chorus for them? He never failed me yet. He'll never fail me yet. Yeah. 
And so, Lord, we thank you for the hands of our brother and our sister that has been raised. They've raised it, O oh God, because they know that they have not yet made that commitment to walk with you. So with the raising of the hand today, may you touch their hearts, O oh God, that they will come to that realization. That if they put their trust in you, O oh God, those things in their lives that needs to be worked out, it will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am your God, my people. Uh, God, I have shown up in your midst and I'm here to tell you, my people, that you can trust me with your life. You can trust me with your heart. You can trust me with your finances. You can trust me with your health because I, the Lord God, have done it before and I, the Lord God, know how to do it again. So if you trust me with what you have, I, the Lord God, will give you the increase that you seek after. And you will never be the same again, said the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah to the Christ. Hallelujah to the Christ. Hallelujah to the Christ. Lord, we bless your name. We bless your holy name. We bless your name, mighty God. We thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for ministering right now into the lives of your children. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory to the name of our God. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Mandola Bakunde. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody shout hallelujah in this house. Good God Almighty. I sense a holy push right now. Every person, every person that has diabetes. I'm going to do something that I did many years ago. The Lord just brought it to me. I said, every person with diabetes, I should give them one of these sweets to eat. I said, I'm going to give it to you. Hallelujah. Somebody just give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anywhere I go, I want the world to know somebody with a right ankle right ankle problem I'm feeling it right now who are you oh god come here bro come here Come here, sis, come here. Come here, my friend. Anywhere I go, I want the world to know Jesus Christ. Never fail me yet. Come. J just have a seat right down there, bro. Have a seat. Yeah. So my, my brother can anoint your leg. Yeah, the right ankle. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down. Sit down. 
never fail me yet. Now, I told you some time ago, open this one, that years ago I gave someone who was diabetic. something to eat it was sweet and they didn't want it but I told them I represent God in this house and since I represent God anything I give you to eat can't hurt you it must help you I sense that same anointing on me right now and so every person with whom the doctor has diagnosed you with diabetes take one of these take one of these Go eat it. Hallelujah. Anywhere I go, I want the world to know Jesus Christ. Never fail me yet. Oh, he never fail me yet. He never fail. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Give him a hand clap of praise in the house. Hallelujah. Anywhere I go, I want the world to know. Sit down, sit down. It's time to worship in giving because we need to get, we need to get to the ladies. Petrona and family. Lord, we ask you right now that you'll do something special. Her trust is in you. So likewise is the family's trust. Will you do ministry now, O oh God, in their lives? The doors that need to be opened, will you open them? The one that, ones that need to be closed, slam them shut this morning. Hallelujah. And by your power, your children will stand up and declare, how excellent is your name in all the earth. For Christ's sake we pray. And God's people say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Anywhere I go, I want the world to know that he has never failed me. You know, three weeks ago, while they're bringing out the receptacles for the offering, I was at work and somebody came by to for me to sign a document for them. So I came downstairs with my phone, put it on top of the car, signed the document. And when I got back upstairs, I realized that the phone was on the car top. So check my phone, the other phone that I have, to see if I have the person's number. Couldn't find it. I began to panic because that phone has my life is wrapped up in that phone, in my digital phone. That's the one that all of you send that WhatsApp message on. So if I lose that one, every, everything about me is somewhere out there. 
But, but you don't have to worry, though. You don't have to worry. Um, even though it's smart, it doesn't have anything else other than, you know, external information. Um, you see, once I see money, I get distracted, you see? Yeah. All right. And um, so I, I called someone else who I know the person was going to, to see. And I said, call her for me and, and tell her to check on the, on the top of her car if she sees my phone. And by the time she got through to her, she said, no, she's right here with me. The phone is not on the car, neither um, anywhere around the car. But then something just said, call your phone. When I called it, a gentleman answered the phone and he said, Sir, I found your phone. Tell me what is on your phone. I said, my picture is on the front of the phone, but you don't know me. So you don't even know. Um, if I, whatever I tell you, 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 you can't even validate it. I said, where did you find my phone? And he told me. He said, sir, just stay right where you are. I'm going to bring your phone back to you. And I said, just as simple as a phone. Uh, and the phone costs quite a bit of money still, really. Um, but just that phone to show you how God doesn't know how to fail his people. God never failed me when my phone lost. He never failed me. The gentleman brought the phone right back to my office and gave it to me. And of course, I just gave him his, gave him something you know, for him to put back gas in his car and go back home. You know, and I'm sharing that with you to let you know that in your simplest matters, God knows how to show up. It's not only in your health that he will show up. He will show up in the things that doesn't seem as critical because I can get back another phone. But God made it possible. And when I asked the gentleman, because he's driving, I said, how come you find the phone? He said, I'm just driving, sir. And when I looked to my right, I saw the phone over there in the bush. What kind of God we serve? What kind of God we serve? That's why when I come to church and I say, I have no other God but you. Just trust in the Lord, my friends. Trust your God. God will work it out. Amen? Amen. It's now time for you to worship in giving. Let's get things going. Let's get things going. Let's go now. Honor the Lord. With thy substance. And with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Father, we tell you thanks for that which you have blessed us with. God, we pray as we give to you with a willing heart, mighty God, a portion of that which you have blessed us with. We pray, God Almighty, that it will be acceptable and approved by you. You will find joy in it. God, I pray that it will please you as we offer up, mighty God, this offering to you, not as, uh, mighty God, the priest, 
in the book of Malachi did, Father, and it angered you. But we pray, Father, as we give with a willing heart this morning, you will be pleased. We pray that you will be glorified and your people will be edified. They will continue to receive of you as they give unto your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Where is Brother, Brother Johnson? Oh, I noticed from morning your wife, I walk up and down with baby. You know, you know, slip me, all right? Uh, your wife, I walk up and down with baby. See you Sing it, sing it. You better get right with God. Come and do it now. Under the cross of Jesus, I lay my burden down. Oh, you better get right with God.
bless the name of the Lord. So it's well, we are way into Sunday school time, but we meet back here at 11 o'clock. However, we're going to do it at 11 o'clock. We meet with the with the finer of the of the sexes. So those who have high testosterone levels are reminded that you will leave us and go home and cook the dinner until the finer ones get home. All right? And then I'll see you again Wednesday morning and then Wednesday evening and then Friday morning when we will come back again to, to move away or to send home our brother's mother. Um, God bless you, Jared, Mr. and Mrs. Jared. Good to have you. Thank you for stopping by today. Have a great day. Uh, just a bit of announcement again. Um, for the persons who go into the funeral service on Friday, the bus leaves at 8 a.m. Not one minute after 8, but 8 a.m. The bus leaves at 8 a.m. That is loud and clear. And then there are two persons we know in this church that will not make it to the front of the choir. I'm sure you heard them this morning. Y you know? Who are they? And? You don't know the other one? The one you sit down. There's a bird of a feather flock together. So he's the one who sit down so close. <laughs> the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you.